A brand new update means new ways to play and build, with new blocks to work with if you're skilled, and even new structures to be filled. This is my biggest video yet going through build ideas that I would love to work with in 1.19, but that I know are such a terrible idea to spend survival time on, so instead I'm showing you what they would look like if we had built them. This is 19 projects you absolutely shouldn't try, and I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. I would say this video took a long time to make and that's why you should do it, but I'm actually just starting making it now, but I do know it's going to take a long time to make, so if you appreciate these long form videos and the longest ever builds you shouldn't make video, then please do subscribe or perhaps like the video or do any of the positive things because this is a very positive thing, right? This is the ancient city, or rather, this is what the ancient city looks like in every YouTube video, but if you actually saw it normally, it would look more like this. You just see the random fire and lava and occasional lanterns, and sure, you can light this place up using torches or another light source of your choosing. But but there's one light source that just beats all of those, right? The idea here is simple. The best way to let light into any structure is to use natural light because it is going to be all the way maxed out. Look how much better this place immediately looks with just one single block of this, but what if we didn't have just a single block of light? What if the entire portal was fully excavated all the way to the surface? That would take an insane amount of time and survival. And fortunately, we're not in survival, but it's still going to take a long time because what we need to do is fill all of these blocks and replace them with air. All of a sudden, this makes the entire place look as good as if you had night vision, but all of the time. And it not only does that, but it makes this stunning visual as you look out of the hole. And it's even better than just a stunning visual from the ancient city looking upwards, but also it works the other way because you can look straight down from a very beautiful piece of well-crafted uh, terrain gen on the surface down to the most intense and horrific and scary uh, terrain gen down below. And as long as you make some safe falling places, uh, then and there's no reason this can't be one of the centerpieces of your world. Obviously, this involves destroying about 200,000 blocks, even more if you wanted to destroy the entire area around this, because this whole area isn't properly lit. I mean, what you'd have to do for that is you'd have to destroy the area around all of this stuff too, which would be insane, right? But if you were crazy enough to excavate the over a million blocks that it would require, you would get quite the spectacle from both angles. Seriously, this is a minus 46 coordinate, which is crazy enough by itself, but it's a minus 46 coordinate that is visible from over 150 blocks in the sky. It is nuts to look at, and again, I would not want to mine those million blocks in survival, or rather, I would want to mine those million blocks, I'd get about a tenth of the way through, and then I decide I never want to look at it again, which is why I had to get my urge to see this out in creative, just like with the next project. Because the new skull blocks are quite a- Ooh, what is this? Is this sideways seaweed I'm seeing right now? Huh. Strange. Because, anyway, skulk blocks are a very interesting palette to play around with, and one of the easy ideas I had would be, would it be fun to cover the entire surface of a river with skulk blocks? So it'd be a skulk river. But I think you'd lose a lot of the depth that the river actually has that way, and so one of the ideas that I immediately then loved was, what if you replaced the river bed? That's right, all of the sand and gravel and dirt. What if you took all of those blocks and replaced it with skulk? This would take an insane amount of time, because you'd have to get a silk touch uh, diamond or neverite hoe down in the deep dark. You'd have to mine thousands and thousands of these blocks and then replace each and every single one of the ocean bed blocks of these. Again, very bad idea that no one should attempt, but if you were to attempt it, what would it look like? The answer is apparently something seriously spooky. I left the clay deposits in here for now, uh, and I kind of like the addition they bring, uh, the tiny bit of texture you get in an otherwise sea of black. But honestly, it's like one of those, have you ever looked at like a Vanta Black painted uh, anything, like an apple, where you just can't discern the shape? It kind of looks like that. The riverbed kind of vanishes, and instead you just get a bunch of drowns and big salmons, as well as small salmons, uh, because we're playing uh, Superior Minecraft, of course. But you see a bunch of uh, like uh, floating salmon uh, just above some skulk blocks, and that's about it. It's very, very strange. Uh, in so many ways, there's even a parrot here, and uh, I like the result enough that I seriously do want to contemplate playing around with water and skulk together. Um, I think it looks objectively horrible in so many ways, but that's why I like it. Maybe you disagree though, maybe if you do, you might like my third project, because clay is now infinitely renewable. No longer do you have to go to your riverbeds, or as of 1.18, your lush caves, etc. Now if you want uh, clay, all you need to do is make a very simple 
a uh, little thing like this, and boom, you've got yourself immediate access to clay, and what do you want to do with that? Well, it's a good question. The first thing you should be considering doing is building the world's best house, because this, my Let's Play house, has been proven to be the absolute best Minecraft build ever created by anyone ever. That sounds impossible to believe until you realize the feng shui principles, the merging of bricks and oak wood, it's just too much for any mere mortal to look at. And here's the great thing about it, if you want to build a house like that, you can do so and you don't even need to cook the clay anymore. You can just use pure clay straight from the world and you can make a Toy Cats Let's Play House replica but using mangrove wood and clay instead. Wow, isn't this an interesting experience? It's, it's so weird to me that you can build a Let's Play house out basically any material and it still looks just as questionable just as maybe you shouldn't build it but there's just something I love about this so much I even got the frog lights mixed in there um, but yeah basically any existing build you have can be rebuilt using a little bit of uh, clay and mangrove wood and it's a pretty fun idea by the way for, for the fourth build here because of course you shouldn't actually build a Toy Cats Let's Play house using clay instead of bricks it obviously looks better with bricks I mean it's just such a great build uh, we shouldn't tarnish it by using a lesser build uh, quality material so uh Instead, let's talk about mangrove wood, because mangrove wood can be used in all sorts of funky ways. I love the sorts of ways that you can use it to make anything made out of wood, but what you can also do with it, definitely my favorite use, is combine with other wood types to make flags. You can make an English flag. All with a bit of extra effort, a Union Jack. Okay, this is a terrible Union Jack. But it's not such a terrible Icelandic flag, is it? Actually, you know what? This might be one of those builds that you really should do in survival. Because getting a lot of these mangrove planks isn't that massively hard. Even if you wanted to scale this up so it would take thousands of planks to build, which of course I'm not going to do here, but it wouldn't be too hard to get off those blocks. And if you were going to do it, I mean, it would look something like this. <laughs> this is over 10,000 planks strewn together in a giant Icelandic flag. I think at this ratio, you do need to start considering the exact dimensions you're going for a bit more. I kind of scaled it up a bit too perfectly, but still, I, I, I like the giant Icelandic flag. It might have to be an addition to any world where you like Iceland, which should be most worlds. I mean, you know, polar bears don't come from nowhere, right? Anyway, uh, speaking of Iceland and polar bears, the next build is just as useless as one of those two things. So this next idea brings me back to the ancient city, which, by the way, is covered in far too much gravel. There we go, that's much better. That was the only thing that I could see that is wrong with this ancient city. Anyway, one of the ideas that I had uh, regarding this, because we have this big portal that we just don't know what it's going to do, but it is this wonderful shape that's kind of disappointing that it's just empty right now, and so what do you logically do with that? Well, you do what people have done ever since the Never Portal was able to be expanded, which is you place your own fake portal behind it. It's obviously not going to have the same effect as if you had a real Ancient City portal, but there is just something stunning about seeing this thing being actually filled with the portal dust which you can see right here. Also, I think one of the other concerns you might have is like, well, it doesn't really work both ways, because on this side, you're going to clearly see the obsidian, which is kind of a bit too uh, obvious, and I think there's two ways you could deal with this. One of these would be obviously covering this thing up entirely. The other one is just covering around the edges and making it so you mostly can't see through, besides the tiniest bit of purple. I think that's the much more preferable solution by just kind of covering up the corners like so. And now you have an ancient city portal, which looks kind of interesting from this side alone, but which mostly has the intended effect of making the warden's head, which this is clearly based on, looking that extra layer of spooky, and also making the reinforced deep slate look like it has a use. Obviously, if you get too close, the illusion breaks, but that's true for any nev portal. I just kind of like the way that this one happens. Is this a good idea for survival? Almost certainly not, because again, at some point, we'll find a use for these brand new portals. Who knows when that is, but it's worth keeping yourself ready for it, just like how it's worth keeping yourself ready uh, for the next great idea, which, get this right, the ancient city is filled with skulk blocks and also skulk veins. What could you do if you took all of these blocks elsewhere? Obviously, you could make a skulk jungle. You just place skulk veins on every single one of these surfaces and you slowly corrupt the entire thing. So the way that I'm doing this in creative is a little bit bodgy. My idea is to place skulk in every possible air block and then all of the air blocks that are attached to nothing will slowly decay, I hope, and all of the ones that aren't in the air should eventually attach themselves to trees, like you're seeing happening over here. It's like using a warhammer when you need to use, I don't know, a needle, but 
I think as you're going to see, it should allow us to see what would happen if you took absolute thousands of these blocks and covered an entire forest in them. I've accidentally created a horror that's much more interesting than what I was going for. I mean, this entire skulky biome is very interesting by itself, but just look at the big blob of Skulk Vein that you can walk through, fly through, and you can even break if you really want to, but that makes these really weird cubes you just don't see anywhere else in the game. It's a very, very strange effect that I really wasn't intending to do on this scale, but oops, apparently. I'm just gonna let this run for a while and see how it plays out, I guess, so fast forward time. Okay, so this is one of the worst ideas to do in survival, but apparently it's also a terrible idea in creative. I guess Skulk has to be like specifically picked in a certain direction. It doesn't automatically scoop onto it like torches do. And so if you try to place Skulk everywhere, not by hand, it's also a terrible idea. <laughs> but uh, yeah, would not recommend this in survival or creative. Wow, that's a first for the series. Um, if you're curious, this is survival projects. You shouldn't try, just like the next one here. Man, this is such a weird thing to go through. Anyway, moving on from that mess, do you know what one of my favorite new block palettes is? It has to be the mud bricks. When mud bricks were first announced in this trailer right here, I loved looking at the house they built and I thought to myself, wow, that sure is a nice one. Would it be cool to build that exact house in Minecraft? And obviously, it's perfectly fine to build one of these houses. It wouldn't even take too much effort. But what if you made like multiple of these houses. What if you made every one of your Minecraft builds just one of these mud brick houses? Well, I mean, obviously it would take too long to do that, but maybe, maybe we could do that anyway. You would not believe how hard it is trying to actually place blocks because of all the skulk taking up, I don't know, all the memory of the world. I, I don't understand what actually happens underneath the surface. I just know that this house should have been very simple to build in creative, but it's a little bit trickier when you've got a ton of uh, <laughs> processes taking up all of your resources, I guess. Actually, do you know what? Seeing it side by side of the trailer makes me realize that they've changed mud bricks to be much darker um, than I guess they used in the trailer. Or maybe the saturation is just way up. I'm not too sure. Either way, I've also realized that I'm using blue amateur mistake. I think it's cyan, I'm guessing. Oh no, it's just light blue. So we're gonna replace the blue of the light blue. And then we can do what's important here, which is of course, in survival, it'd be hard to build multiple of these houses. Getting the wheat together and the mud and the stone bricks, you could do it in not a huge amount of time. But if you wanted to make, let's say, a whole village worth of these, that would be a big task. If you did a little bit of copy pasting on the other hand, honestly, as I look around at the monstrosity that I've made here in creative, this might actually be a better project for survival. Getting this many mud bricks wouldn't be so tragically difficult. And then you'd be able to actually plan the thing out properly. But for now, as an idea, have you considered making the mud brick house that they showed off at Minecon Live? I bet you haven't if you're not me. And if you haven't, then you're missing out on, <laughs> not very much, if we're being honest. But yeah, I love that we have a little village community all living, uh, you know, these are Mojang made mobs living in a Mojang designed village. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, is that just every village I'm describing right now? You know what I'm not describing when I say that though? My next beautiful build idea on this list, which hopefully is also, you know, we've had two fails in a row, but my next one is a sure bet. Did you know off this update, all you need to do is take a water bottle or rather just an empty bottle uh, down underwater. And then you can just repeatedly spam the right click or the left trigger. And you're going to end up with mud where all of the dirt was. Because you're surrounded by water, you don't need to refill the bottle or you do, but it's instant. And it means that you can have this really nice effect of kind of turning the seabed into this much more uh, dark, uh, black mud color, which a lot of people do like for collection, but some people also just like the texture. It's a much better texture than dirt, you might say. And so what would it look like if you took an entire riverbed and did this to it? Honestly, the answer is much better. I'm worried the reason as to why that's true is because it's in black. You know how black is just the universally loved gamer color? Which is why, by the way, you can buy literally just an IBX Toy Cat hoodie uh, available in black. Uh, right now, I think. <laughs> and uh, yeah, people, black is the most popular color because that's just how people like things. In fact, I think you could take any Minecraft biome, just replace the blocks of the black mud 
Is it even really black? It's more of a gray. But take the blackest uh, natural looking Minecraft block and you can make anything look better. I mean, sure, look at this lovely jungle or this lovely extreme hill biome with its uh, grass right now. But imagine it with mud instead. Wait, don't imagine it. This is a silly build idea video. You've got to admit, it does add something quite nice to the biome. I think the only downside is all the dirt is still here. I mean, we could easily replace that too. But then we just have a big black mountain. You know what? Do we want a big black mountain? I think we do. Oh yeah, that is quite the improvement, huh? Honestly, it actually is. It, it's just a big black muddy blob, but it actually works quite well. It makes you realize that the mangrove swamp, a lot of the, the heavy lifting in the atmosphere building probably does come from the mud. I mean, the fact that you can turn it to mud and mud bricks is great, but the mangrove swamp is a pretty biome as it is, but I've always felt like looking at it, wouldn't it be better if it was like high up above the ground? I think the mangrove swamp looks great, but I think it's kind of wasted by being so covered with trees, and it means that you never really see it from the other biomes. I mean, seriously, it's just from above or from any other high place, all you see is this big green mess, and I think it's a waste that could be fixed by elevating it maybe 150 blocks in the sky. Kind of like this. Wow, isn't this nice? I think we could do it a little bit better by having like a waterfall coming off it, like so. Ooh, look at that. Now there's actually a way to access this thing. I think it'd be so cool to take an entire biome and just have it float above the clouds because then it would darken the space where you removed it. I think that moving entire places like this is such a time consuming project, but it can be so rewarding, right? Even the mud patterns look cool from underneath this thing. All of the trees kind of just merge together, but with this absurd view of the environment around it. I just love the entire thing. I think every Minecraft biome could be raised up a lot, but I think the mangrove swamp in particular would really benefit from it on both sides. My next idea for a structure is a really simple one. I mean, probably a really dumb one, but I've always wondered what would happen if you took uh, like a really new school structure, like the, uh, you know, beautiful, brand new ancient city. It's just been designed as of this update. What if you took something so new and modern and you made it feel super old school by making it out of an old block, like wood perhaps? As you can see, the wood just feels out of place here, but what if the entire structure was made out of wood and mud? Well, the answer to that apparently is just an absolute mess. I mean, look around at this thing. It doesn't even really look old timey. I guess we've got to replace even more blocks. We've got to think about the, the chiseled deep slates and the slabs and everything else. And if we were to do that, which I mean, is, is this worth our time? Yes, it is apparently. You know what? I think it's fun solely because of the noise it makes when we walk and the fact that it's clearly a different block palette just applied to something it shouldn't be. But besides that, I'm not too in love with it. Besides the sound, but I don't think that's my my job's doing here. Imagine if you had built this entire thing by scratch using mud bricks and mangrove and then realized it was a bad idea. See, this is why you need your boy Toy Cat to give you ideas you didn't know you had and then tell you why they were terrible. You know, actually, why, why is this series a thing? It's a good question. So to balance it out, I think this next idea has to be really useful. And this is a really good idea if you have the time, because think about it. The deep dark is the scariest biome in Minecraft because there's only one mob that can spawn here and it's the warden. But the warden actually doesn't spawn as a result of the biome. He spawns as a result of the skulk sensing blocks. If you didn't have any skulk sensors, or in fact, if you didn't have any of this structure right here, you just have a deep dark biome where no mob could spawn. That'd be amazing, but obviously it'd be impossible because you'd have to remove all of the blocks right here and you, you see where this is going, right? Okay, so I'll admit this one takes a lot of doing in survival. Destroying an entire structure is just something most normal people don't do, if we're being entirely honest with ourselves. I mean, you know, I'm not a normal person, I've admitted that before, but that, you know, it's just not a thing that most people will do, but you will get some diamonds in return, and you'll also get the very safest place that you can place a bed. Right here, there is no way any mob can spawn in a huge radius off here, and if you want to go extra safe, maybe even make yourself some air holes where you can also get some skylight in here, just to make things an extra level of safety from mobs. There is no way anything is coming to get you from such a wide radius, and that's why this is a good idea that would just take you far too long, and the far too long bit is why it's such a bad idea. 
unlike this next idea, because if you destroyed an entire ancient city, you'd have a ton of these extra blocks lying around, and you know what you could do with a ton of extra skulk sensors? That's right, you could easily confuse your friends, because imagine stepping foot into this monstrosity. The activation of the skulker blocks will activate other skulk blocks, and it activates a very, very strange thing that allows you to see this lovely circle around yourself that shows you a lovely little radius. I don't know what this would ever be useful for, and that's why I'm not going to go through the effort of collecting this many skulk sensors in survival, but my god is this beautiful, right? I, I want to build this so bad, I just also know this is definitely a build that is best left for creative, because it also doesn't really help anyone. Like, unlike the previous silly project, which would at least stop mobs from spawning, this would, I guess, theoretically stop them from spawning in a certain radius around the player, because that is a light source, but not by very much. Unlike my next genius idea, which is of course to use those light sources, and to make it so that you'll never have a mob spawn in your forests again. Admittedly, most of the time they won't spawn in your forests anyway, but now you can be absolutely sure. This is a beautiful testament. I'm living currently in the city of Neon, as I record this. I'm gonna be home temporarily this, as this goes up, but I digress right now. Uh, this is a lovely testament to neon style blocks, because if we're being totally honest, that's all frog light really is. It's this neon style, super glowy, super, it, it really works as a leaf replacement in my opinion, uh, looking block. I think the only thing more perfect than turning an ancient city into mangrove or mud bricks would be to turn Minecraft's best structure into one of the same things. That's right, we're finally gonna do it. This is something I've been waiting a very long time for, but we are going to make ourselves Minecraft's best structure using Minecraft's newest resource. This seems like it should be impossible, but if you just watch and see, you'll see how out of nowhere it looks like I have nothing, but then all of a sudden, what's that? Oh no! Yeah, it's the best structure in the game! I think I may have done the outside wrong, but that's totally fine. Let's build another one. Some people say that modern Minecraft updates aren't as good as the old ones, and I agree. I mean, if you look at a modern day Minecraft structure and how useless and pathetic it is when compared to the older Minecraft structures, you'll realize that we just never had things as good as we had it back then. They were the golden days and we just didn't realize it, but now you can appreciate it with just a few mangrove wood or mud brick slabs. There's actually no good reason you shouldn't do this in survival, except for obviously making everyone else on your server or world jealous, or maybe your dog jealous, because when people get jealous, they might burn down your stuff, and you don't want that because you like good things, like our next build idea. Okay, this is another classic. I do love to play around with these in survival, but I feel like I shouldn't do it uh, for like the fifth time running. But what if we were to take a desert temple and rebuild it using mud brick blocks. I know actually decent Minecraft builders prefer not to use just new blocks alone, they'll try to mix them into their palettes or other weird professional building words, but I just love using these two blocks together. I think they complement each other so well, and I think mud bricks are actually a better look for this structure than the sandstone ever was. I think this is much more appropriate. There's just something so historic, so ancient feeling about this place. What do you reckon, internet? Do you think this is a better look for the desert temple? Because I totally do think it is. In fact, this is encouraging me to build like super old school, old themed stuff using it because mud bricks just suit it so well. Probably because we only had mud bricks till fairly recently in the human tech tree. Speaking of the human tech tree, let's move into something <laughs> which is a little bit more literal of a tree. Okay, so do you know how crazy it was when we replaced the entire forest with frog light blocks for leaves? What if we took all of the logs and we made them mud? Yeah, this doesn't look much better, really, does it? I think we're probably running out of ideas. However, here's one that's gonna blow your mind. What if we took every single leaf block in the mangrove swamp biome and replaced it with a different leaf block just to see if anyone would notice? This is a crazy idea, of course, but what if I was to tell you that I've already done it and these are a different leaf block and you didn't even notice? Well then, You'd be silly for being fooled by that because I haven't done it yet. This is what mangrove swamp leaves look like. I think they're an interesting enough leaf block. Honestly, you can barely tell unless you're paying attention. This is a very good use of your time in survival. Get all of your shears together and move around the tree leaves and see if people get... Okay, there's one, there's one final really important idea here because, you know, before we scrape the bottom of this barrel, here is one last thing that I think is a good 1.19 commemorative build. 
that's just a bit too much for my side of world. So you're really scared of the warden in 1.19, right? What's the only thing you can do to scare him away? Assuming a buff frog won't do that for you? Well, the only logical thing is to build a giant statue of him and see if that scares him away. I actually really love the giant warden statue. I just know it'd be such a pain to build in survival, but I just love it as a project that you should totally take on in creative if you can. Or maybe we should just get together. You know, it's not that many black concrete blocks. It's not that many cyan terracottas and cyan concretes. I'm sure if we just get enough of those blocks together, we can do it. It's just one of those things where, where is it going to go in a survival world versus it can go everywhere in a creative world. And so this is a build that I built in creative, but I really don't recommend building in survival, despite being someone who loves survival building. This is in fact 19 of them, which I hope you've all enjoyed. I have never done so many of these in a single video, so if you did appreciate it, please do consider subscribing and let me know you love the dumb build <laughs> idea series. It took many, many, many hours to put this one together, so just some form of support would be appreciated. But for now, I hope that you enjoyed, I hope you have a nice day, and I hope you're enjoying 1.19 all okay, because I'll see you all in the next one on another day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good, good day. There we go. <laughs>